Welcome back to the We See Monsters channel. I'm your host, Jenna, and I am back from my maternity leave as of this week. I had a bunch of pre-recorded stories these past couple of months, but I'm glad I was able to at least keep the content going for you guys. This week's story is super interesting because it involves an entire neighborhood of people in Clareton, Pennsylvania, who literally just got up in the middle of dinner one night and left their homes and everything behind and nobody returned. And it was always kind of this big mystery why an entire neighborhood of people just left. Some people believe there was some sort of infestation with the land, but others have a much more sinister theory. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. My buddies and I had rented a cabin near a lake for the opening weekend of trout season. We fished, we drank beer, we cooked over the fire. We were having a great time. That Saturday night, as we sat around the fire with drinks in hand, we started telling ghost stories. Most of them were old urban legends and some of them were personal experiences. Others were scary stories that ended with a hilarious insult to someone's mother. It was all in good fun, until Max told us about Lincoln Way. Lincoln Way was a residential street in a town near where we lived in southwestern Pennsylvania. We were all familiar with it. My parents used to have a friend that lived in the last house on the dead end road, so I spent a good portion of my time there when I was a kid. The street was something of an oddity because every single house there was now abandoned. No one seemed to know why the residents of Lincoln Way just seemed to get out of Dodge, leaving behind food, furniture, and even cars. A local group of urban explorers had recently posted an article on their Facebook page about it, finding that the houses still had the same owners as they had as far back as the 70s. But no one was willing to live on the now overgrown street. Most people assume that the people moved away from Lincoln Way because of the poor economy taking its toll on an already poverty-stricken area. But Max claimed to know better. He claimed to know the real reason that the residential street no longer had any residents. According to Max, something lurked in the woods that surrounded Lincoln Way. Something not human, but not like any animal we had ever seen or heard of. He claimed that this creature had tormented the street's residents. Pets would go missing, only to be found some days later, mutilated at the wood line. Backyard gardens would be torn up by paws too big to belong to rabbits or dogs. People would be kept awake at night by something scratching and banging on the side of their homes, or snarls and howls that seemed to be right outside of their window. Supposedly, no one had seen the beast causing such trouble on Lincoln Way. At least no one who had stuck around to tell anyone about it. Max claimed that the street was abandoned out of fear, each occupied house being left after its inhabitants were spooked by an escalation in the creature's torment. That would explain why most, if not all, of the houses still contained so many belongings you don't take the time to load furniture into a U-Haul and empty your fridge if you're scared out of your mind. I was skeptical of the story, as any reasonable person would be. Lincoln Way might not have been surrounded by other residential streets, but it was right off the main road. That main road had a gas station and a bar less than a minute down the road one way and an entire town less than two minutes in the other direction. Surely, if there was some terrible creature in the area, it wouldn't stick to that one road and the patch of woods that surrounded it. My parents' friends had moved out of that neighborhood almost 20 years ago, so my argument that he had never had a problem with Bigfoot was almost immediately swept aside. When I suggested that we go check it out the next weekend, I was met with horrified stares and exclamations of disapproval. You can't go there. I just told you that something horrible lives in those woods. 
dude, even if there isn't some sort of weird monster there, I'm not risking getting arrested or hurt by wandering around a street full of houses that are probably falling down. These were just some of the arguments I heard from my friends. But only one person, out of the five other guys that sat around the fire with me that night, was willing to explore with me. His name was Sam, and he was a big guy covered in tattoos. Sam was arguably the biggest badass in our group. The only reason he agreed to go with me was because he didn't want me to go by myself. He saw that I was determined to debunk Max's story and told me, I'm not letting your dumbass go in there alone and get mugged by some hobo squatter or some weird shit. Your mom would be pissed at me and she's way scarier than Bigfoot. So the next weekend, on Saturday to be exact, Sam picked me up when he got off work and we drove to Lincoln Way. Sam parked his truck in front of one of the houses at the beginning of the street. It was still light outside, but it was later in the day, so we brought flashlights with us. We didn't know how long we would be there or how dark it would be inside the dilapidated houses that we were determined to explore. We decided to walk along the wood line first, which meant walking through the overgrown backyards of the houses. We tried to look for evidence of digging in the yards, but the grass and weeds were so high that it would have taken forever to scan the ground it grew from. We walked the length of the street through the backyards, crossed the street at the dead end, and walked down the opposite side through those yards when we were confident that nothing was going to jump from the trees and grab us, we started looking inside the houses. Sam and I weren't comfortable going into many of the houses because of how run down they were. The ones we didn't enter, we looked at the insides through first floor windows. Every house on the block was full of belongings and most of them looked like they had been ransacked. Furniture was overturned and thrown against walls Photos were strewn all over the floors. The curtains that still hung were shredded and pillows were torn open. Out of all of the houses, there were only four or five that weren't tossed and those houses were more disturbing. The houses that we entered that didn't look like a hurricane hit the inside looked like someone could have been living there, minus the dirt and grime. Pictures still hung on the walls Books were still on the shelves, beds were made, and dishes were still in the sink. One of the houses had food on the table, though it looked like some small critters had munched on it long ago. It looked like the previous residents literally just up and left in the middle of dinner without bothering to take anything with them. One of the houses had a garage, its door locked like it fell off the track long ago and it still had a car parked inside. The sun was almost completely set when Sam and I exited the last house we had explored and we were thoroughly creeped out by our findings. So we decided it was time to call it a night and go home. We were walking towards Sam's truck when we heard a loud scratch followed by a bang. We froze standing completely still in the middle of a cracked road and listened to the sounds for a minute or so. It was coming from behind the house to our left. Sam whispered that we should get the hell out of there, but I wanted to prove Max wrong. Like I said at the beginning, I'm an idiot. I slowly made my way toward the noise, keeping my hand cupped over the front of my flashlight. I was about to round the corner into the backyard when it stopped. I listened for a few seconds, standing completely still. I could hear something coming toward me slowly, something big creeping through the tall grass. I pressed myself against the side of the house and looked back to see Sam still standing in the middle of the road. A deep guttural snarl made me turn my attention back to the yard and I saw it. It stood on all fours and was as big as a horse. Thick, black hair covered its massive body. Its muscular front legs were tipped with claws longer than my fingers, 
and its mouth was full of too many razor-sharp teeth. The few people I've described it to reasoned that it was a bear or a large wild cat far from home, but it didn't look like either of those. The beast's head almost resembled a massive dog, except for the horns perched on either side. I stared into deep red eyes, rooted to my spot with terror, as this creature slowly made its way closer to me. Another growl escaped from its throat, and I began to shake so badly that I dropped my flashlight. The sudden movement and flash of light seemed to startle it. I took my chance and ran back to the street, screaming for Sam to get into the truck and start the engine. I could hear heavy paws hitting the ground not far behind me as I ran faster than I ever have in my life. I launched myself into Sam's truck and he threw it in gear and pulled a U-turn to get us the hell out of there. The headlights illuminated the beast for a moment as it stopped in the middle of the road to avoid being hit. What I had thought was fur was actually closer to a mass of thin porcupine needles and everyone on its back stood straight up as it crouched to spring at the truck. Sam was speeding toward the main road when we heard the howl of the creature. It sounded pained and angry, as if it was starving and upset that it was denied a meal. We now know why Lincoln Way was abandoned. The people were harassed, maybe worse, by some kind of monster that resides in the woods, waiting for someone to investigate a strange noise so that it can attack. It's hungry and vicious, and it's not alone. I know this because when Sam was turning the truck around during our great escape, his headlights briefly pointed into the woods, and that's where I saw at least three more sets of deep, shining red eyes. You can click the links below to check out my TikTok and listen to the We See Monsters podcast.